Denver Taber Taberare Chimatake Chimata Chimatara Dosio Chotto Chopito Chopiri Simpai Data Kedo Benetto Niwa いつものように無視させされた。全部食べられちまった。ちまった。ちまったら。どうしよう? What would I do when he finish all of it, all of the food? But here, the tabe, taberu is in the passive form, taberareru. So even though it is true that we do have this clause first, because of the to here, what kind of to is this? To. Chipiri. This is a to at the end of a sentence. So yeah. it's a... Um, this is quotation to. We can know because when. there is a comma right here. If this was when to, there would not be a comma over there. It'd be dosio to. But here there's a comma right here, which very aggressively separates this to from that section. Let us know that it is not cause and effect to, it is quotation to. This is a quote. We are quoting the above line. So that means we actually should start with shinpai datta. Shinpai datta. Don't worry. Uh, what does shinpai datta uh, mean? No, worry, worry. It is I was worry. Hi. Um, um, how was worried was worried. he? Chibiri. Cho, cho biri. Um, I was somewhat perfect. Uh, what would have you been um, worried about? Hmm. What worry? Um, the quote. This toll is a quotation toll. Right. Um. So let's say that. Um. This told Mark Khan thoughts. Hi, His exactly. inner dialogue. It does. Inner it does. thinking. Hi. Um, what was he He was thinking about? to himself that he was worrying, um, what will I do when all of the food is finished? Perfect. Now... Oh, no. Um, th that eight. is, it is, it is eat, and then we have shimao. Shimao means completely. So to eat completely in English is to finish. If you're talking about food, that's what we say in English. Um, you wouldn't say owaru <laughs> with your meal. I, I mean, I guess you could say it. They both would work. Um, so finish is totally fine in this context. How does he emotionally feel? about the meal being finished, about the meal being completely eaten up. Chimao. Chimata. Um this there's a there's a negative Hi, there's a negative feeling here. So he was worried that maybe Bennett might totally eat up all the food. And he's like, man, what should I do if that happens? What should I do? I'm hungry. Bennett ate it all. Kedo is not where we are. Hi, Kedo. Um, Kedo. However, Benetto niwa itsumo no yo ni mushi sareta. 
Burnett. Um, he paid me no attentions. He uh, ignored me. Right. He ignored. Uh, and is this strange of Burnett? As, no. Gosh. As always. Perfect. Monita, the Sarita is a um, hmm. Sudo, but you're right. In the past, Sudo is now in passive form by adding a uh, ne do. This is because Mushi means to ignore, hence, Benet is being modified with ni and not ga. The person doing all the actions in the sentence is con. Khan is worried. Khan is being ignored. That's why we're doing passive form. Why did he use taberare? Hi. Taberare chao. Remember, this is a thought Khan had. This is not actually a part of the sentence. This is the reason why Khan was worried. He was worried that Benetto was going to taberare chao the tabimono that he offered up saying taberu, which was a sausage muffin, a muffin with sausage stuck inside of it. And he was worried that perhaps Bennett, when he offered the food to Bennett, that Bennett would just gobble it all up. So that means the subject so here for this zembu taberare chimao is the muffin. The muffin will be completely eaten, the muffin with sausage. Sorry, if I... Da. That's muffin what he's worried about. Tab. He's not worried about nobody eating it. He's worried oh. about the muffin being eaten. So the focus is on his muffin that he just bought. So he's thinking, what if the muffin is ate up? When the muffin is ate up, what am I to do? Hi. You can definitely 100% translate this as when. That is grammatically correct. I would say in this context, it's not the correct choice. It does make sense grammatically, but it sounds really bad in English, doesn't it? Like it doesn't make sense logically. And that's because in English, we separate the word when and if into two different words. But in Japanese, it's only one word. And you have to use context to decide, is this when or if this if? It, it's always going to mean when, when the verb, the second verb is in past tense, because then it was already happened. So that'd be when that happened, not if that happened in the past, that'd be weird. So since it's future tense, we now open up the possibility for if as a translation of para. Um, but it can be when with that as well, but not super likely with para, like, like, um, like it can be used with when, um, that would mean the next time this happens. Right? Like when summer comes, I'm going to go to Japan type of idea. Um, but here, if makes more sense because we already know it did not already happen when we read the whole sentence, but when means it will happen, right? When you get home, right? It means, but if you get home, totally different vibe because of the vagueness that is in English. Well, tada, as I said, is both. They, they don't separate. Between all, all ifs, wins, and Japanese are both. They don't separate between these two ideas. Um, so this context, if, is just better because there is a sense of vagueness, right? It's not a for sure that it will be zenbu taberarerao. It's just in the chance that the muffin is completely eaten, then what will I do, right? How are you? Butari de Yami Yami Ichi Hiroba no Yatai Ya Roten no Hato Shinai Shina Jina O Mite Mawata. The two of us 
uh, look around at the merchandise. Patoshinai. Not so good. The merchandise that is um, subpar. The merchandise that is of low of a um, wasn't very um, attractive, I guess. Uh, okay. it, from the booth, from the row 10, and from the Thai, yeah, Thai. From the cart shop, from the uh, shopping cart place of the plaza in the night market or the Perfect. night market plaza. Um, Boro Fuku to Kata. Kata, kata kake ni. Mi, io. Sisunda kai mono. Kyuka. Yako. Yaku. Hai, kyaku. Yaku ya. Hoka ni mo. Chira horai iru. Hoka ni mo meaning hoka is the other. Ni mo the other as well. They are chira hora iru. Here and there. Chira and hora here and there. They, they kind of sprinkle in sort of kind of a, um okay so the customer that was buying kaimono the customer that was shopping or the shopper so the shoppers uh, was wrapped to sunda they was wrap their body, they wrap their body in a uh, shoulder, uh, shaw, a shaw, uh, kata kakeni, a shaw, and that they was wearing, um, to, they, they hold oro fuku, worn clothes. Right. Shoppers wrapped in, in worn clothes, clothing Custom. and a shawl. A shawl. They, as well as other, was here and there. Right. Higure no kimi no e kaga ya tai. No, it's no hashi that at the end of the line of the shopping cart. Uh, what was at the end of the line? The uh, minions of the Lord of Twilight. Um, they were at the end of the line of the shopping cart. Right. Uh, con bo, uh, con bo. Combo or um, what that they were holding um clubs not club but uh but what was it you, you called it a club a is the correct word so it's bludgeon a sharp <laughs> an instrument of death it's a also it's a blunt of... instrument used to a kill blunt. people. At the uh, corn bowl. Uh, I, they were holding this. They were motte and uh, kanshi, which is observing. Hi. We're monitoring. Uh, 
a monitor like a monitoring tower that I saw the word it's a kanshi to which is observation tower or an observation deck that uh either they were doing this they were doing uh, monitoring right uh, so oh uh all of that is um sort of described as being the thing that I need to get that uh, so I found I found all of, I found the situation I found that they was monitoring it's sort of like a koto but it's not a koto it's this particular event um, yes that's why it's no koto wouldn't I, work well in this sentence because that would be more generalizing here, but the character is being very specific here. That's why he's afraid, right? Um, if it was Koto, I'd be like afraid of the idea that there could be a guard monitoring at the end of the line. But it's not really about that. It's that there is a guard right now standing over there Hi. with a weapon and they're looking around. Possibly they might Hi. spot me, right? But well, those too generic. That that would be really boring. You're like, oh, the fact that there is a man over there. That's something that exists. I saw it. Hmm. It just that that the uh, no shows that it's he, he didn't just he's not like a whatever I'm looking at type of thing. He is responding to a real. He responding I, to an immediate condition here exactly. that he meets. He he meets to get that he's he right. discovered this. Tokiwa at that time. Hi. At the time of this discovery, at that moment, I, I'm guessing, uh, I got the legs. Gaku, gaku, she. They shiver. They crackle. Hi. Um, or more was without thinking, but this or more they use the the thinking. Rama, you mentioned there's two kind, two different. There kinds are two of kinds thinking. of thinking. There's omo, which is um emotional thinking. Basically, it's like I like the color blue and direct thoughts. And there's kangaidu, which is to think like to ponder to use your brain actively for example one Hi. plus one equals two is an example of kai kangaidu but saying the words one plus one equals two is omo so in english we don't like i said differentiate between these we just use the word think context lets us know if it's emotional or if it's i'm actively using my brain like if it um Hi. But, so yes, exactly. So right here, as you can tell, he's not thinking. He's not trying to do this. Um, so that's why it's omo wazu. If it's kangai is it? I think there's certain contexts he could use that, but the the thing here, the idea is that his brain is like white, right? My mind went blank. That's what omo wazu kind of means. Right? There's My nothing in his brain at all. What is the kanji writing for to recollect to remember something? Kangaidu, oh, yeah. oh, boy, do oh, boy, boy, do this guy. Oh, uh, this is oboidu, and this is omo to think. Hi. Omo to think, obo is to recall, to remember. Kind of. Um, okay, oboidu specifically is to memorize. Something. If you're saying like, ah, I just remembered something, you probably use omoi dasu, um, where with which the thought pops out. Omoi dasu. I see. That'd be the passive thought. Um, but avoid is like, um, I'm memorizing my homework, or ah, I remember that. That's what I learned yesterday in class. So you use avoid and omoi dasu for recollection. It just depends on the context. Um. Hi. So yes, this is what I'm thinking about here. This omoi dasu, the idea that when you remember something, there is no, it 
wasn't like you were consciously trying. Do you know there's two kinds of remembering, right? Hi. One is that you suddenly remember That's because you saw one. something and you recognize it. And that word and there you just said is actually omoyatari. Omoyatari. You just remember it. And then the, the other remembering is when you, it's like it takes you five minutes because you actively yeah. squeezing your brain to get the information out. So that would be the is that some form of panga eru? Is yeah, that some so form of it, They use a different word, which is oboidu for that. That's oboidu. Oboidu is trying to remember something. I see. Okay. So there is that distinction between two types of thinking and yeah. two types of re thing. Yep. Hi. And in general, okay. that exists for all in Japanese, that difference between the passive doing something and forcefully doing something, right? They have different verbs for that. And, you know, they're, that we'll see, we see that a lot in Japanese. Versus in English, it doesn't really matter that much. A lot of times to do a difference between a passive and a non-passive, it's just adding like the word by after the verb and then adding the extra information, right? Like the verses right. in Japanese, they a lot tend to have a separate, sorry, transitive and transitive. That was, that was the wrong word. The transitive, intransitiveness, which doesn't, as I, as I said in English, we don't really separate that. But in Japanese, that's everywhere in the language. So this is like kind of that same kind of idea of that transitive and transitive idea of transitive being right. trying and not trying. I don't know what the words mean, fake words. Hi. But yeah. I, 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 that's the same notion, for example, when they say that uh, if if you say that you love someone, the word love here is literally the word like, like suki desu. I like okay. it. I like it. I like. But then there's also the word uh, aisiru. Yeah, aisiru. It's literally aisiteru, which is actually love. So the idea is that one is some sort of composure here. There's that whatever that other thing is it caused me to like it and then i said it is your will you do you willing this thing to happen you are the, you are the agent oh it's kind of like right it's kind of like omo omo specifically i said it i stated because i'm i which is the noun for love and then you're adding sudo to do love um the difference I, is that suki is really just like the word like um it's we do that same thing in, in America as well. You'll hear those funny stories where a girl will start dating her boyfriend or the, or the opposite. And the one that people will be like, I love you. And then the character person will be like, oh, thank you. Right. Because sometimes love is a heavier thing, depending on your culture and where you grew up. So in Japan, I <laughs> is more culturally as a word is more aggressive. So on a whole, people tend to avoid it. Well, in America, the culture can vary differently depending on what state you're in with like um, Texan states, the word love meaning just being I like you, right? They, they call people love. Oh, love, you're doing such a great day. And you're doing that with just like your friend. But you wouldn't really say that in like the like in Washington, really, you know, so that's a culture thing rather than really being a language thing, I would argue. Because there's because nice. you do see that same stuff. Yeah, this is just love the noun versus suki is a adjective and in Japanese they do their more better example is that it is more passive like you're right with the idea of um we don't say I like this it is this thing is liked by blank that's how they always state it right it is like hon ga suki as even taken out the romantic hon ga suki there isn't really a way to say I like books in Japanese you would say like watashi wa, but that's not what that means. Literally, it's not I like books. It's still just saying the book is being described as being liked. So it's always being liked by watashi. When we talk about watashi, well, books are liked, right? It's um, stuck in that adjective kind of passiveness where the subject is not the person doing the liking, the subject is the thing being liked, um, which you're right that I would be not that. It's watashi wa kimi wo aishiteru is definitely much more active being I love you. Um, so that does kind of show that 
that part shows. But I would just um, say you were defining like the meaning of the word. So you wanted to say no right. to the meaning, but grammatically you were making a point that was correct. Um, it just, it wasn't related to the meanings of the word. <laughs> it just so happens that grammarly they're different, but meaningly it's like the same. English. I just wanted to point that out. Um, but yeah, definitely true. This one's very oh. more aggressive. That's probably part of the reason why as well, because it's so more, much why it's avoided in Japanese, because they like to avoid that aggressive like statings of I do blank, right? They prefer to put something else passively as more subjects. Um, so here, what Khan is basically set, basically indicating that there's an instinct going this is an instinct instinctual process going on here without hey, thinking he's not, it. exactly um he wanted to he without thinking he wanted to nige dashi want to run out run out run out hi hey. what is the son naru mean naru here mean that it hasn't happened yet. It does you mean want that. to. It means something is about to happen, and it wasn't like about to happen because I made this happen. It just was like automatic. It's just it's like still that same passive kind of idea, Mowazu. So without thinking of it, I was just about to run away. So the just about is my translation of so ni nai with just being so i guess well, it's, it's kind of just the whole phrase to become that it looks like literally it is to become like blank but the like being like looks like this is going to happen right with soul being appearances um just about is how we say that in english um you now we're back to Money. the book. Hi. Was it you that told me that I'm not the idea of Japanese? Whoa, you suddenly it's just really not... cut off on me. Sorry, I I Hi. remember that someone told me, I think it was you, that Japanese as a whole is not subject mandatory. Or right. it's, no, it's not subject heavy. In other words, it's not English to where you have to indicate who is doing what. Yeah. Sometimes one can just simply say something happened and that's it. Hi. Right. In right? Japanese, I probably told you that. Yeah, Japanese is a subject drop language. So whenever it's possible, they like to drop the subject. Um, the subject should only be there for a reason and it must be needed. If subject is defined by context, it's not going to be there. Hence, for example, what really confused you with the taberare chao on the other line that confused you because you were like, what is going to be eaten? It's not being defined here in his shinpai ni natta sentence, which was over here, right? The zenbu taberare chao. That such as the subject is not mentioned at all in here. What's going to be completely eaten? But contextually, the previous line was literally, I offered up my muffin. So the thing that would be eaten would be the muffin. We, we mentioned that in the previous line. So in Japanese, it's always expected for every single clause, if it makes it that you can kind of insinuate. Same with this whole sentence right here, doesn't say ore anywhere inside of it. Who is worrying? Who is being ignored? It's not stated at all. And that's because it's insinuated by context, because this whole paragraph right here has been about things that Khan is doing. Right? It said, um, it says there were coins left over that Bennett had given this person, which should be me. Somebody caught bought some sausage. Since Bennett was Bennett Kata, we know he's not the subject. So who's left? It's me. I'm the one who's left. There's no one else defined here. And I was defined as a subject in the previous paragraph, so it makes sense to assume that we're keeping orewa as the subject. 
And that just kind of goes through all the way here of I being the one that bought things and I being the one chasing after Bennett and things like that. But this whole paragraph right here does not have a single ore. Hi. But in English, every single one of these sentences would have to have an I. I bought some coins and then I went over and bought a sausage. I did not, see, I had a new dad there. I did not steal it. I, bu I actually bought it. Bennett, uh, then I chased after Bennett. Do you want to eat it? I asked. Well, then I presented him. Would you like to eat it? As you can see, I had to spate the I for every single sentence here to make it sound correct in English. If you don't, then it's not Hi. grammatically correct. So, yes, you're totally correct in that. And that, that's probably where their passive avoidance thing, why they like hongasuki more than I, I sudu, like you mentioned, because I sudu would have an insinuated subject, which makes it more aggressive. How would you read this word? Hi, um, is food top to, to, um, read. Uh, re 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 what is this verb? Um, to borrow. Perfect. How do you read it? Kari nai from Kadiru. Can you read this word for me? Kari Kari nai. Hi. Ka Ka or ta money? I couldn't hear that well. It is ka. ka. Sorry. Ka. Hi. Kadiru no ka. Kadiru no ka. Um. Ka Kari nai means I can't handle it or insufficient. Um. Go read this next word. Te he kuruma te oshi kuruma. Hi, this kuruma does actually get rendaku, so te oshi guruma. Te oshi guruma means exactly what it literally means. It means something with wheels that you push with your hands. So, an example of that would be a wheelbarrow doesn't have to be a wheelbarrow, but it's any type of thing that's car-like, right, has wheels that you would push with your hands. So it's specifically pushing, not pulling. You know what nosete means? Nosete. Nokorimono sara ni nosete gondekita. I carried it. And then I no said that. I um no said no said that. Hi. The subject here is the Susin. The Shokudo no Susin ga. He got the no korimono and no seted them onto the Sara. Then he hakonde kited, carried them to me. So what did he do with the nokorimono? Sarani, he he stacked them on the plate. Yes, he did. He put the leftovers onto the plate. Nosedu means to put on, put into, anything like that. Noseta. Okay. Let's go read the line from the book then. With the coin that was given to Benet by Nebari, Chokuriyo Hina Nado O Kai, I bought, um, no, Bennett bought. Uh, Shokuryuhin na. Shokuryo. Nado. 
食料、食料品。Huh. I fully don't hear anything coming from ya. This is quiet. Oh no. Whose device fault is it? Mine? Yours? Oh. oh Okay, rejoined. Hi. Um, oh now I can hear you. I wonder what happened. I don't know. Did, were you able to hear? Uh, uh now I can hear you, but it fully cut off for a second. Hi. Um Tsugi tsugi no sete. Tsugi tsugi to no sete. He placed. He placed the leftover coins. That's a really good guess. That is super good. However, the last thing that was marked with the particle O in this sentence was shokuryohin. So it makes more sense to assume that this O is being passed over to the next sentence. You place and this the is just a little clause and has nothing to do with it. He placed the ingredient into the cart uh, that was borrowed Hi. using one coin. Perfect. So the cart was bar was was um rented exactly. for the price of one ichimai ichimai koka perfect um te ita 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 mean that it was it, it was hi and what is a doka made out of doka of this is, is a a bronze hi this copper. is a bronze which would be a bronze copper. Coin. Theoretically, it's copper, but it's this bronze level of coin, like it's the brown coin. So I take bronze because that would depend on how you're translating the book. Right. Like we use copper in English, but it's that same kind of idea. It's the bronze metal. You know what kushinetu means? Kushinetu. Nani sui nang. Yes, non suika. Kusunete. Hi. Ore wa doko ka. For here, you have to start with the uh, all the way up here if you want the context. But netto ga mushikui darake no mofu ga tsumatta hako o mitsukete kita no de ore wa soko kara sono hako kara nansu ka kusuneta. From out of that box, in some number, I kutsuneta. I took them out. Yes, it is a kind of taken out. Specifically, it's a kind of taken out that you would expect a dorobo to do. It is to pilfer, to swipe. I swiped out a, a several blankets out from the box to snipe. Steal. You know what this kanji is? Swipe. This kanji is to um to receive like like when you go to an airport to uh, greet someone, right, Mani? To greet. No, I think you think about aisatsu. Aisatsu doesn't really look like that. Um, to. <laughs> The kanji. <laughs> this is kanji. I saw it before. This is a I food can... item. Oh, is it tamago? It is tamago. Hi, 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 hi. Tamago. Hi. Without context, it's definitely really hard. Let's go read this example sentence. 
Dorobo wa tamago o kutsuneta. I snatch. The, the thief snatches the eggs. Perfect. Dun, dun, dun. You remember what a nedan was? Nedan was the price. The Perfect. price of the item. Nice. How would you fit Miru into what form? I want it. I want to see. Mitai. Hi. Um, Mitai. Can you read this sentence for me? Koshaku sama wa tamago no kaidan o mitakata. I want Hi. to see I the should've... price. Exactly. Hi. But here it's the Duchess. And I should have had the, the reading. Nedan. Like... Nedan, not kaidan. Nedan. So our next word, kosho, um, is very similar to nigiru. That was in the same page as Nidon originally, but Kosho has more uses because Kosho means negotiation in general. So it can be used for Nigirui or doing other kind of Kosho. The Ko part here basically means exchange. So this is a negotiation, which is hag a type of haggling. Um, right? Same kind of idea. That's so, that so money. Why does it have the. Um... It like gakko, the, the, that show had the liquid water sign to it. And walking, cause you cry when you're forced to negotiate. Oh. Okay, kosho, kosho, kosho. I wonder if that show come up in any other words. It does. Um, tosho means to wade across, like to wade across water. So it does have a water meaning that kanji to it kind of probably it looks like it comes from the idea of importing goods like you had to import goods across like bring it across water. So when you start negotiating with people for rights of food part of that negotiation, you know how to do with like rights of passaging right you I want to go around this way through the water to deliver my goods at the cheapest price possible right. Hi. Kosho. That's why it had to cut, but you, you cross above the water or you cross some sort of water on foot, right. literally. Two foot there. I see. So you kosho o shiteru. Meshi sky wa kaimono gyakuda. The shopper is, is the shopper. They serve the servant that was doing the negotiations of the price with the sh storekeeper was the shopper. Perfect. So if you on tenses, but no one cares. You know what a sukima is? Sukima is a gap. Perfect. A so, chink. Exactly. Suki on its own also means gap and chink, but it tends to be used for like, um, literally like a chink in your armor. Like there's some kind of, like you, it, like you notice a error that you can like exploit, right? You see something you can exploit. That is a suki normally. Um, so a this means- Opportunity tends to be the meaning. I see. Like an Achilles heel, sort exactly. of, like a weakness. That is exactly. It tends to be used in that way. Versus Sukima tends to be used for more literal gaps in locations, gaps in space, rather than just gaps in opportunity. Or Achilles heel, like you said. Um, let's go read this line. Ore wa benetto ga motte iru. Jo Seki. Hi, that's a really good guess. Jo as a kanji has setting as its kanji. So this is Jo um looks like Jo looks like this. So what is that kanji up there? It's not Jo. It's Gaki. Kagi. There'd be no render here. 
because it starts with ka. But if kagi was in the second position, that's the only place you get the rendaku. Kagi ishi o mitte mitakata no de. I, I wanted to see the 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 keystone that Bennett was holding. Therefore, Bennetto ga yatai no shu ten shu to. Tamago no ne dan kosho o shite iru suki ni. During the opportunity when Bonnet was negotiating the price of eggs with the storekeeper, Poketto kara from out of the pocket. Kutsunete mita. I made. I snatch. I try nice. to snatch. Perfect. This mita mean that he hasn't completed the action yet. He's in the process. Yes. Um, and it does also mean normally that he does succeed. Um, oh, he succeeded. To, if he didn't succeed, you'd be more likely to see oto suru. Relational form plus tosuru that tends to show up when they don't succeed. Um, but I just think this is like a fun sentence because we see a lot of gas here, but they're all not the subject of the set main sentence. The subject of the main sentence is orewa, marks with the wa, and the gas are all subjects of clauses, uh, relative clauses, right? Matteru benet and kosho steru benet. I think that's a little interesting right there. In English, we'd have to, like Hi. I said, Reiterate many times to let us know what the heck, who's doing what. Um, you know how to read this word? A secret. Hi. How do you say or a secret? treasure? No, not it's treasure. Just a... It is secret. Um, I lost it, money. I don't remember. Hi. It ends with mitsu, the hmm? mitsu toneru. A secret. Hmm. It's a mitsu? Close. Himitsu. Just he. Himitsu. Himitsu. So this kanji himitsu. right here, which is means to hide, is he. Shows up in this word. Can you read it for me? He. Meru. Hi. So he meru means to hide something, but specifically in a like a keep to yourself kind of hiding. You don't normally use he meru with like, oh, I'm going to go hide the Pokemon or something. Instead, you use kakusu, right? Pokemon o kakushita. I hid the Pokemon. So this is more like like to hide to oneself, to keep to oneself type of idea. Um, What's meru. this bolded word? Uh, the second kanji is UB. It is UB. Finger. Hi. The this is first one of is the... Oya. It is. What is the Oya UB? That's the thumb. Hi, it is the thumb. Correct. It's the dirty pig. Um, what's the tear form of to keep to oneself? He met the. Uh, he missed it. This is no rendaku. This no is rendaku. uh ichidan. Um, what is gray uh, in Japanese? Hairo. Perfect. Can you read the sentence for me? Kozo. Wa hairo no ishi o himeta. I keep the stone of the gray stone to myself. The yeah. the boy keep the stone to himself. Yeah, so this is kakasu. That would insinuate maybe he like dug a hole, put it underneath something. 
Here, he maybe he just put it in his pocket or he saw it somewhere and didn't want to tell anybody about it. So just kind of focusing on a different style of hiding. Um, do you remember how to read this word? This word refers to your toes. The second kanji is saki. Hi. So the first kanji is also a kun reading. Hi. That mean claws. It does mean claws. So the kun reading for claws is kun reading. I can't remember mine. It is to me, to me, to me. Do saki? humans have to me? Does human have to me? I don't think so. So in English, they don't. If you translate to me as claw, humans don't have claws. But the word to me in Japanese is not just used for claws. They're also used for talons and hoofs. And also nails, like a fingernail. So that's one of those doesn't translate one to one thing because they decided to take all those words and just put it underneath one category. Tsume. Um, normally, if you're referring what? to fingernails, you're going to be more specific, um, making sure you know it's a human nail, not that someone has some kind of bird um, nails. But it is used for that. Um, na me raka is a na adjective. That means smooth. Nice smooth. Nameraka. Smooth, smooth. Hi, nameraka. Can you read this like, example? Hi, nameraka. Hi. Uh, so no namaraka. Nameraka money or namaraka? I forgot. Ooh, this is We're right. Name. Hmm. It's name. I spelled. I spelled it wrong here. Hi. So no. Nameru is to lick something. <laughs> that's, that's probably Name, where Name. I got that. So it's smooth. That's Hi. smooth. Smooth of that. Uh, so no. Nameraka na. Ishi wa. Hai iro da. The rock that was smooth. It's gray. Hi, that smooth rock is gray. Can you read this for me? Oh, oh, yeah, you be no sume. Mane, what is the kanji for? What is the word for horn? Isn't it sine? No. Suno. Suno. Suno is like a horn. And then you will see the kado kanji for it. Suno. Smooth horn. Sume is claws. Hi. That's interesting. It, they do sound similar. Oh, yeah, you be no sume. The claws of the thumb or the the, th the fingernails of the thumb. Hi. In this context, fingernails would be the logical assumption to make. Perfect. Um, chikake is a method or mechanism. Shikake. Um, so... Shikake nai. No Shikaka method. No, no method. method. Hi. There's nothing you Shikaka could do. Nai. No method exists. There's no mechanism. Shikake. Shikake. Perfect. Hi. So, let's go read the line from the book. Oh, yeah, you be no sime kurai. No. Okisa no Hai iro no na Hai iro no nameraka na ishida Mari Mariyoku O Himete iru yoni wa mienai Doyu shikake nandaro. Shikake is the method. Hi. How how did it work? 
shikake nandaro. How how does that work? Hi. Do you? Let's go start one class at a time. Isi, isi da. The the large. Oya yubi no. Is there a subject defined in this sentence? Uh, subject of this sentence, I'm guessing, is the rock, right? It is the rock, but that's the subject is actually not defined. The subject is being defined as a rock. The subject is that, or perhaps if you're talking about it was from a previous line, would probably be um, kagi, isi. The keystone. So what kind the of keystone. stone is it? So the keystone is a rock. That is the sentence right here. But then we want to say, what kind of rock is it? The keystone is... It's gray color, smooth rock. Right. And what is the rock's okisa? The size is roughly of the fingernails, of the yeah. thumb. That's obscenely small. <laughs> Why is it That's so tiny? Tight. <laughs> but the question is, Bonnie, why is the no? It's the no at the end of Okisa. Well, Okisa he, is a noun. Is... What do you mean? And then there's no at the end. Yes. I don't... But does no mean that? This this end of the this no means um no this is no that comes after nouns for example oya yubi no hairo no kurai no okisa no these are all the same nos so this no describe ishi the I... rock that is of size roughly of a of the finger yes the, so the reason why we have a comma here is to skip over the hairo no um naberaka nabe because this right here right. is a relative clause it's a relative clause basically that because there's just there's so many no's going on top of each other but the same thing it is about the size of a finger that if it was directly attached to this without a comma it would get hard to read um, it starts going, is it a large gray? Is it a large gray smooth? Where am I supposed to stop? Um, so by putting a comma here, it makes it very obvious we're describing the rock versus describing that. Because the rest of these are kind of not describing, right? This right here, this is being described by kurai, which is then describing okisa, right? That's how this I is going. Versus Hairo is skipping, and this guy are both describing the Ishi at the end. And it's pretty obvious it's doing that because it it's, this would make logical sense. But otherwise, it gets too long. There's too many adjectives there. So it's easier to put a little bit of an and in between these two things, the this whole thing and these two guys. Hi. So then, Mario. Mario. Always have a problem with this. Yeah, you're Mario. Very, the R pluses the Ys are very hard for you, but those are very hard for most English speakers, mostly because of the way you're probably making the Japanese R. I would guess, like, I can't look in your mouth, but Japanese R and English R are made in different locations. Like, when I say ra ri ru re ro, it's different than da di do de do, um, which I'm non native speaker, so I could definitely be not saying it as nicely as an english a native speaker would be but for me when i make an english r my tongue my tongue is much like further back in my mouth it's not touching my alveolar ridge versus if i'm making a japanese r it's right up there um doing the tap like in water so if you do the r it's Hi. probably easier to say ryo than saying ro which is very hard to say because they're yo, yo and ro are two very very different sounds 
You say Rai Rai Hu Ke Ho. Rai Ru 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 what did I do to it? I I keep it to myself. He met the That is possible. What do you think is the subject of the sentence? Me and I. Me and I. I could not see. I do so not that see. is how we translate me and I. But me and I is actually a loop verb like suki, which is an adjective. That means the subject of me and I is ga, and that is both the object, the object and the subject. Are one are it's one and the same for me and I. So in English, we normally translate it as I I. We add the I in there because we love sticking ourselves into everything in English. That's how we make it sound English. But in Japanese, it does the opposite, as we normally see in Japanese, where the subject is the thing being not seen. What is not so the thing that's being not seen is the stone, but specifically a aspect of the stone. What aspect is not being seen? Its power is not seen. Exactly. Specifically, the the himeteru kind of tokoro. It's kind of how I would say it. As, it's it, as, I, if, <laughs> as if its power is hidden to itself. I, it cannot. I, yeah, exactly. As if it is hidden. Hi. So now, um, finally, we switch the subject back to, I guess, the daro is I, but the subject here is still the um, magical stone. Doyushikake nandaro. The daro is I, but doyushikake nanda is referring to the stone. Hi. How does it? He doesn't say, how do I operate it? He say, how does it operate? Exactly. What method did they use to put the magic in here? How is the magic being hidden in the stone? The main character is very curious. He's like, how is he doing it? It's just a teeny tiny stone. What Hi. method did they use to imbue it with the magic to? How is the magic being hidden? Um, okay, dude, I, what is the potential for? Oh, wait, actually, it's the end of our, <laughs> it's the end of our, hi. end of our day. Hi. Uh, three minutes Sorry. past. Oh, I was, I, I was, I thought we had way more to go. Um, okay, any other questions before we go? <laughs>